Hello everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 58 of the Super Grapple Bros podcast. Podcast about two brothers who like to talk about WWE and video games. Former WWE employees who like to discuss those things. I am one of the brothers, El Murfo. I'm going solo once again this week for the podcast. Going to be um, hopefully a relatively uh, short one. We're just basically going to be going over because there's no pay-per-views to uh, review or preview. Just going to be going over kind of uh, what happened, big things that happened on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, um, 205 Live st- type st- stuff, um, and then just touching on some wrestling news and touching on the video game news. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's jump into it. Let's get right on into it. So Raw this week. Uh, We finally had the return of Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar finally showed his face on WWE TV uh, for the first time in months, uh, which um, a lot of people, myself and D-Murph included, have been a little uh, upset about the fact that, you know, like Lesnar barely shows up. We're sick of of, of the Universal Championship just not being on TV that much anymore, barely being defended. And honestly, that's not so much like Lesnar's fault. That's more so just the, the, the deal that they gave him. And the and I think it's also just the way that they've been writing him, depending on how many dates he's supposed to show up for. Um, he probably could have shown up and defended the title more, but this is the storyline they're going for. And it really makes me, um, makes people kind of hate Lesnar, I guess. I kind of just, I just, uh, I just don't want the championship on him anymore. So, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Um, I have nothing against him. He did great in everything he did this week um, and was also the uh, inspiration for some pretty uh, awesome memes. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he was there, but he was backstage, didn't want to come down to the ring, refused to come down. Kurt Angle told him, uh, told uh, Paul Heyman that if he doesn't come out to the ring um, that and doesn't fight at SummerSlam because he doesn't want to, uh, that he's that Paul Heyman's going to be fired. Uh, Roman Reigns came out talking smack, wanting to fight, and it's like, it's like, I do I want Roman to win in, in this match? Yes, but um, you know, I'm just I don't like the way they're going with Roman's character. It's like, dude, you lost twice. I understand that you won technically in the cage match. But you're complaining about it so much and claiming and like talking about how the authority is against you when really it's just incredibly vague and like Stephanie McMahon is just doing certain things to where it's really not that like diabolical compared to what she's been known to do compared to what her father has been known to do. And he almost just sounds like the boy who's crying wolf or just overly complaining. And I just it's hard to get behind a character like that when you want him to dethrone a champion who never shows up. Um, I just, part of me just wants this to get me done and over with, just give Roman the championship, just get it off Lesnar. Then we can go on to bigger and better things. Uh, hopefully once Roman has the title, um, his character will improve. Um, we can get him against maybe, um, Braun Strowman, maybe Braun cashes in at, at SummerSlam and then he chases the title. Um, but I just feel like once SummerSlam is over, once you get the championship off of Brock, whether it's Roman winning it or Roman winning it and then Braun uh, cashing in on him, then I think things are going to get better. Because I just think this is a bad situation. They should have capitalized on just pulled the trigger on Roman at WrestleMania and just been done with it and just have Lesnar do other stuff. Um, however, I will say that the stuff that Brock did on the show was pretty good. I loved the way I loved his acting in his promos. I loved his backstage segment with Heyman. I loved how he turned on Heyman. He got really intense, um, really into it. Um, again, the magazine stuff was the stuff of memes. Uh, and like, you really like part of me was almost when I was hearing about it, I actually ended up watching the segment over again. But when I first heard about it, I was like, you know, this kind of sounds ridiculous, you know, Brock said how he would, how he and Paul were, have been friends before, but I, but when you watch exactly what he says and he's like, you know, how long have you been leeching off me? We've never been friends and stuff like that. And you see like the intensity he brings in that promo. I believe it and it's fine and I love it. And I'm kind of like, I actually like Lesnar in this role. I just, I kind of just don't like the chase. I kind of want it off him, but I kind of like him in this role. I kind of like, he's still a great heel. And when he did, when he came down to the ring at the end of the show, 
was amazing. And if you notice one thing, I'm sure like a lot of people noticed it, and it's not like that super secret because I know it's rumored too. Is it seems like they're trying to build for a Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar rematch at Summer uh, for WrestleMania 35 once Lesnar has the championship off them, which I'd be completely 100% for. Because if you look at it, they're built. They've been in the seats for weeks that. Angle doesn't appreciate the way that Lesnar conducts himself as a champion, doesn't like that he doesn't want to show up, doesn't like his demands he's been putting on him. And then uh, on Raw this week, he was saying how Lesnar doesn't do charity, Lesnar doesn't like do Make-A-Wish or anything like that. His character doesn't. And I guess he doesn't do it in real life, but that might be a WWE directive to protect his character. Um, and how it really pisses him off. And then Lesnar got in his face and F5'd him. So I can definitely see this being a, the, the planting the seeds this last month um, and maybe even like the last couple months too, whenever Angles talked about his frustration with Lesnar, to slow a slow burn, a slow build to Lesnar versus Angle at WrestleMania. So if you guys aren't digging the whole <clears throat> Universal Championship storyline going into SummerSlam, which I'm kind of struggling with a little bit outside of Lesnar show like being just damn good at being at showing his intensity and in promos, I. I'm really struggling to get through it, but just take that little silver lining that, like, we're going to get what seems to be a really awesome rivalry and rematch at WrestleMania for Angle and Lesnar. I uh, just want to check in on the chat real quick before I move on. Um, Hugo Gonzalez says, uh, yo, what's up? Big Stupid's upset that I didn't wear a lucha mask. For those of you who watch my gameplay streams, I wore a hockey helmet when I played the NHL 19 beta. Um, so... He wanted me to wear a lucha mask while I did the, the podcast. Maybe if I play WWE games, but I don't think I'll do that for the podcast. Be straight faced for that. Um, Hugo Consalva says that Lashley would be a better pick uh, because even if Braun cashes in, we'll have a new feud and not a Braun Roman feud. I don't know because Lashley he had a terrible rivalry with Sami Zayn. His he had a decent match with Roman, but his rivalry with Roman just sucked. And then he's going into another rivalry with um, Elias, which just seems flat and bad. Like, Lashley is not good as a face. It, it seems to me like Lashley was best in Impact when he was a heel. Um, and that's a clashing... And they're not portraying him as that going up against Lesnar. And to be honest with you, I don't think it's a bad thing... Um, that Braun and Roman, um, re reignite the rivalry. That was part, of, probably one of the best things about 2017 was the Braun Strowman Roman Reigns rivalry. So I'm fine seeing them revisit that for the Universal Championship. I'm okay with that. That's not not everything. When you not everything needs to be new when you've only done it like maybe once or twice before and it was done really well. So as long as you can re -ex as long as you can execute it well once again and just tap on that vein and do it well. Like, for an example of how not to do that, just look at Sasha Banks and Bailey, which I don't know what the hell they're doing with them after this week. I guess they're a tag team now. They're trying. It looks like they're trying to just recreate Team Hell No, but with Sasha Banks and Bailey. Um, so we'll see. Who knows? Maybe, maybe like getting to this point was bad for them. I know I'm like going off into a million different directions, but we'll get we'll circle back to the whole Lesnar thing, Universal Championship thing. Um. I think it was bad getting them to this point, but now I think that you have them as a tag team established and friends. And if you keep them like this for a while, and then they go, one of them goes to Raw Women's Championship, then you can start building up to that point where when when one does turn on them, say say you keep it for a year or whatever, maybe you keep it until WrestleMania, that will actually feel it. If you have some stability with them as friends for a while, because right now we're just sick and tired of the back and forth and the indecisiveness. So maybe this could actually turn out and uh, well in the long run. Um, so Big Stupid says, uh, I don't think Lesnar's back after SummerSlam. I don't know. I think I think he is. I think he'll come back. I think he'll do WrestleMania. I, I, I can see him still doing WrestleMania. Lesnar says has said um, before that he has fun doing WWE still. I think... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he just has this one fight in the UFC, see how it goes. He'll do some, he'll do WrestleMania. He could maybe go and do an undertaker type thing where maybe he only 
he has a contract. Maybe he shows up to a couple dates during the year, but he only wrestles at WrestleMania. So that way he still has the majority of the year freed up for UFC. So I would say never say never. They're planting seeds. So I'd say never say never. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, but at some point you got to get a Roman out of the title picture. Yeah, you will. I think what you do is you get the title off of Lesnar. You have it be Roman or, or Strowman. You have them have a rivalry for a while. Then once that rivalry is over, you have somebody come in and step in and maybe go after Strowman and you get Roman out of there. But I think that Roman and Braun was lightning in a bottle was great last year. And I think you should try to capture that again. If you want to get, try and get Roman over, then you can ease Roman out of the title picture. Maybe bring Rollins and Ambrose back into it. Cause I think Rollins deserves another run with the universal uh, championship. Um, with the year that he's been having. Um, and I know that Ambrose, and it's believed and rumored, and we'll get to this later, that, that Ambrose might be coming back soon um, for SummerSlam. It seems like how he'll do it might be different than what we had thought. Um, but yeah, I think eventually you'll get Roman out of the title picture. It's just, I feel like you have to try and reignite that Braun Roman thing for the championship because it was so good when they had it when it wasn't for the title, when it sh- probably should have been for the title last year. Um so I think you you do that you you do something where one of them wins at SummerSlam you have them uh, feud maybe until Survivor Series and then back Roman off. That's when you start maybe giving Roman whatever Roman's storyline for WrestleMania is, is going to be. Don't let it be for the title. You start building towards that at at Survivor Series. You get Roman out of the title picture. He had it maybe maybe he had a really good say they catch lightning in a bottle again. It was a really good rivalry with Braun, but he loses. So fans. You get to enjoy the fact that he lost. Uh, the people who don't like him enjoy the fact that he lost. But he had a good rivalry. And if he had a good rivalry, he starts to win them over. You get them, get him away from the championship, from the title picture. You give him a good rivalry, good feud for uh, WrestleMania. And then maybe he has some more good matches. Maybe you start actually rebuilding his character, rebuilding his his credibility to, the, to um, a large chunk of wrestling fans. So I think that's what you what you need to do with Roman at this point. Because Roman is a good wrestler, and he can perform well. I just think he's been given bad, a bad character to work with, and bad writing. And well, maybe not bad writing, but just he's just been given a rough character and rough direction to go in. Um, footballer says, in my words, uh, in my world, uh, Kevin Owens beats Strowman somehow, then cashes on a Roman after the main event. Ooh, pardon me. Ooh. Um, I would, that'd be nice. Um, I'm fine with, I mean, I really wish that somebody else had won the money in the bank and I hate the, the, the tagline monster in the bank for Braun Strowman. But I feel like if you want, I feel like if, if you're going to have him cash in at SummerSlam, it makes sense for him to hold on to it. I, I would like to just see Kevin Owens actually tap back into that prize fighter personality and actually bring it to Strowman and come close to beating him. That's what I want to see is I really don't like this Kevin Owens, uh, like coward character. And I'm really hoping they're building him to turn back into the prize fighter. Um, he did that smart thing where he took the briefcase away kind of from Strowman for a little while. And then Strowman got it back because he ran away. So it's like, make up your minds. Maybe that's part of the build. I don't know. Um, Big super, you think that Heyman turns on Lesnar, Roman turns heel, lines himself with Heyman? I think, honestly, yes. That would be great. They could also do that with Braun. But I think that would be great. You know, Heyman can turn chicken, you know what, into chicken salad. Um, when it comes to promos. Um, which, unfortunately, doesn't seem like it's something that Roman can do. Roman needs good material, which I can't blame him. It's not, not everybody is like a Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman is a unique individual. Um, and I think, you know what? Roman can still, can say that the kind of stuff that he does and be a, like an, an a-hole, a jerk. And Heyman can like be the one who's more, who can like more, like get the crowd riled up. I think that'd be great. And they've planted seeds for that. And if Lesnar is going to be done for a while, or only coming back maybe once a year, and Heyman still wants to be involved, you got to get Heyman involved somehow. I think that would work. I think that's a good idea, Big Stupid. Um, so just before I move on to SmackDown, uh, one last uh, thing. Um, 
or a couple, two other, two other things. One, um, Ronda Rousey is going to have her first match at Raw this week, uh, which was announced last week on Ronda backstage segment, um, or at a WWE digital exclusive. It was on their YouTube channel. Um, and then also the, uh, Drew McIntyre faced, uh, Seth Rollins. Rollins got a beat down both backstage and um, after the match. So um, I think what they're doing is I don't know if they're going to have um, Dean. I think Dean's probably going to come back next week or the week after, whichever one is right before SummerSlam. And he's going to tag up with Rollins. Now, the question is going to be, will Rollins turn on Dean right afterwards? I don't think so. Uh, so because of the fact that like I feel like they're in a good spot slotted against McIntyre and Ziggler with the IC championship around somewhere. Maybe he turns on Rollins eventually and all four men maybe get involved in a fatal four way match um, down the road for the IC championship. Um, but it, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you get Ambrose and Rollins back together again and you actually see if you can get that to go all the way like you did last year. Maybe, maybe you just reset. Maybe you go for that shield triple threat. I know you, I know we were just talking about Roman away from the championship. Maybe you go for that shield triple threat for the universal championship. Hey, if, if Roman's got Heyman by his side, you got Ambrose, um, having turned on Rollins and Rollins is the face. Maybe have Rollins win. Everybody's been wanting that. We got the shield triple threat match. Um, what was it last year or two years ago? I think it was two years ago just before the brand split, but we've always, but I feel like everybody's wanted to see it for WrestleMania. So maybe you go that way. I don't know. Uh, big stupid. I think it's too easy to assume Braun Cash is in at SummerSlam. I think it is, but you never know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, rumors are saying Oscar may be added to the SmackDown women's championship match at SummerSlam. That's good to hear because that transitions perfectly into SmackDown, where one of the things that happened on SmackDown is Becky Lynch came out, Carmella came out, was talking stuff to her, Charlotte came out, made the save on her, but Charlotte decided, hey, I'm going to face uh, Carmella, and if I win, I'm going to get involved in this uh, singles match that Becky Lynch was supposed to be in, and guess what? Charlotte won. So now Charlotte's back, and now it's a triple threat match. I think, you know, it makes sense because Asuka's been messing with James Ellsworth, and James Ellsworth got fired, but she still has unsettled business with um, Carmella, both Carmella's wins against Asuka haven't been clean, so you get a fatal four-way for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that at all. You could maybe see that happening, uh, this Tuesday. Um, other stuff that happened on SmackDown, Jeff Hardy got beat down by Randy Orton again. Um, Orton let Nakamura, Kinshasa, and Jeff Hardy, and then Nakamura fled. Um, seems like not, they're, they're not working together, but they're uneasy allies kind of against Jeff Hardy. Eventually I'm sure Orton will probably RKO Shinsuke or something like that. And they'll turn on each other and we'll get the, it's going to be a triple threat match for SummerSlam, but I think it's been good so far from what I've seen. Randy Orton as a vicious heel is the best Randy Orton. I've said it before. Heel Orton is best Orton. Uh, other stuff. Samoa Joe cut a really good promo on AJ Styles talking about how he was mentioning his daughter last week, but how he's basically like a deadbeat dad because of the fact that as WWE champion, he's traveled so much and has so many commitments and goes so so uh, all over the place to help promote WWE that he basically doesn't spend any time with his family. So he's a terrible wife, uh, not wife, husband and father. Um, and that it's okay because Samoa Joe is going to take that. When he takes that, he's essentially going to take all that AJ Styles has left. Um, in his life because he doesn't have his wife or his kids with him because he's basically because he's a deadbeat dad, um, which isn't true, but really cool, really good uh, Samoa Joe promo shows how great um, Joe is um, just in general. And I think Joe is the man to finally take the championship off of AJ. Um, it wasn't going to be Rusev. We were hoping it was going to be Shinsuke or that Shinsuke was at least going to win and then lose it um, so AJ can win it back. But Joe is yet to win a major championship in WWE, and I feel like this is the moment against AJ Styles at SummerSlam on a big stage like this. This time last year, Samoa Joe was shining above almost everybody over on Raw in rivalries involving Brock Lesnar. So I think it's time 
to pull the trigger on on Joe, and we just have Joe win the championship and have AJ uh, chase it for a while. Maybe AJ wins it back. Maybe he doesn't. But I think it's time to give AJ the the cha- uh, to give uh, Joe the championship at SummerSlam and promos like he did on on SmackDown on Tuesday are the reason why. Uh, Miz and Daniel Bryan had a uh, had a promo where Miz was on the set shooting Mr. Miz and Mrs. Um, and Daniel Bryan was in the ring and they had a, a pretty good verbal exchange and good God is the Miz just so, so good at promos. Like I could feel and believe everything he was saying. The only bad thing was that the baby crying stuff where he basically refers, uh, said, referred to the fact that Daniel Bryan was basically a baby and then they had, uh, the baby's crying that got annoying as hell. But I mean, Miz is a heel. He, it's supposed to be annoying. It's supposed to get on your nerves. Um, so, I mean, I guess did the trick. Um, yeah. Brian versus Miz should be good. And I did like the fact that Miz said that Miz is just um, chasing, that Daniel Bryan is just chasing after him in order to keep his career relevant um, before his contract runs out. Something along those lines. And that was a good line. That was good. Um Steve said, I think they love Joe, but it seems every time he gets real hot, he gets hurt. Yeah, hopefully that won't happen this time. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, I'm trying to think about what else happened on SmackDown. Uh, the Bar, as I was hoping, beat the Usos in the uh, number one contenders uh, SmackDown tag title tournament. They will be facing the New Day this Tuesday. New Day was on commentary, being awesome with their pancakes and their orange announce table, which was cool. Um... They got up in each other's faces. They're going to face each other next week to see uh, who goes on to face the Bludgeon Brothers at uh, SummerSlam. I am hoping the bar wins and then goes on to win the titles. Um, But we'll see. It might be New Day. Maybe there'll be some tomfoolery and it'll be both of them. Or maybe Sanity will cost... cost, uh... Sorry. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, so I might be yawning a bit. Um... Uh... Or Sanity costs them the match, and we get Sanity New Day again at SummerSlam and Bar, Bludgeon Brothers for the championships. I just want the Bar to win. I, I loved the Bar when they were tag champs. I want to see them with the tag titles again. So hopefully that happens. Um, Big Super says commentary. Uh, New Day need to be on commentary for every match. Agreed. Very much agreed. Um, so yeah, pretty much went over everything. All the championship uh, type stuff going on. Uh, there's stuff going on with Rusev and Lana. Um, there was some cool stuff involving where Lana had a match with Zelina Vega, which was really cool to see Zelina Vega actually wrestle because she was pretty much just, she was just a valet, a manager for uh, not so, not a valet, she was a manager for uh, Andrade Cien Almas for all her entire time in NXT. I think we we rarely have ever saw her wrestle um, in NXT, so it was good to see her actually being not just a manager but a female competitor as well on SmackDown. And it helped uh, build up the rivalry between uh, Rusev Day and uh, Almas and Vega. Uh, Aiden English came down to try and stop a distraction from Almas to try and help Lana. Lana got distracted anyway, got rolled up and lost. And then Lana um, was um, talking to Rusev, I believe, about why like Rusev wasn't there to help her and support her, be in her corner, how she wanted it, wanted her in her corner. I think Rusev like was just a jerk to her about it. Um. I will get to that in a second, uh, Big Stupid, um, when I get into NXT, so which we're about to transition into. So um, interesting stuff. I I think Alistair Black versus Rusev. Will, uh, I mean, not Alistair Black. Um, uh, Andrade Cien Almas versus Rusev will be a very very good match at SummerSlam. I'm looking forward to it. Should be good. Good. Uh, over to NXT. Um. We will, uh, what was it? Start off with Tommaso Ciampa cutting a really, or no, it ended with Tommaso Ciampa cutting a really good promo. Um, it started off, um, with a tag match, Heavy Machinery versus the Mighty. The Street Profits came out, distracted the Mighty. 
Um, and they're like, what? what are you doing in the crowd? Why is all their music and lights playing? Somebody should fix this. Allowed enough of a distraction for heavy machinery to get the win and get revenge on the mighty. So I do like the mighty as heels. Heavy machinery looks like they're getting a lot better in the ring uh, from when I last saw them. Because I think I last watched them on, on NXT like six, six, eight months ago. They have really improved. Um, good to see the Street Profits are still getting screen time. Um, EC3 um, then came out and had a match with Kona Reeves, which was all right. Then um, Velveteen Dream came out and said he wanted to, if he wanted to have an experience, and experience the Velveteen Dream um, regarding what happened at <clears throat> the uh, Royal Albert Hall, which was weird. And it was also weird to see two matches and um, or involve like some inner... <clears throat> some sort of interference or distraction. However, Kona Reeves was not able to fully capitalize on the distraction after hitting a big Samoan drop. EC3 kicked out and then uh, took uh, took care of Kona Reeves, made the pin, got the win. Um, nice little backstage segment after that with EC3 saying that I'll do whatever. I will take whatever in invitation or whatever it is, a talk, a chat, an experience, a conversation, whatever it is. Um, and then later on, William Regal announced that, like, it doesn't matter if they had the talk or conversation because at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, they will be competing against each other in a match. That should be a really good match. Looking forward to it. Um, then we got, um, we also got uh, Mustache Mountain came out. They had a match against uh, just some random, a random tag team. Beat them up and then said, um, you know, we're sorry about, like, we're so, like, Trent Seven said, I'm sorry that my knee was all banged up. I failed you guys. Um, and uh, Tyler Bate said, you know, I'm sorry I had to throw in the towel. But, you know, I am I was concerned about his health first and foremost. Where um, this might lead to Trent turning on Tyler Bate at uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 after the match. And then maybe that leads into them going into a rivalry um, on NXT, uh, WWE NXT UK. Which could be cool. Um, and yeah, they're going, they're invoking the rematch clause. As I mentioned at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, they're going to be taking, um, on Undisputed Era for the ta NXT Tag Team titles. Uh, we also got the announcement that Ricochet and, uh, Adam Cole, baby, are going to be, uh, taking, uh, each other on for the, uh, NXT North American Championship at, uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. Uh, we also got some women's championship action in there. Candice LeRae faced off against um, Shayna Baszler. She ended up losing it despite a strong effort. Shayna tried to do some um, uh, post-match beat-ups. Kyrie Sane came out. Um, Shayna hit uh, Sane, but Sane then tried to go after her, but referees kept them separated. Um, I'm kind of mad on this rivalry. I thought I was all big on the whole rematch thing, but I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens in the next couple, couple of episodes. Then, um, Ciampa came out, had a big, uh, awesome promo talking about how he was right now. He is the best sports entertainer in the world, uh, basically, ta uh, throwing, throwing shade at the main roster saying that it's the A show because he is on it and he is the best superstar in the world. He did exactly what everybody, uh, uh, didn't think he was going to do or what he told everybody he was going to do. He did, um, then Johnny Gargano came out, chased Ciampa off, and then Gargano was kind of acting like an a-hole, not really like cool Johnny Wrestling was saying, like, the only reason why he has that title is because of me. Said it over and over and over again until it was annoying. Aleister Black showed up. Black Mask kicked him right in the face. Um, it looks like they're setting up for a triple threat match between the three of them. However, a wrinkle was thrown into the mix this week. Um, Dave Meltzer reported that uh, Aleister Black has suffered some sort of injury. He got crotched in a mat in a match at a house show um, against Tommaso Ciampa this week, and he hurt got hurt um, during that uh, spot. Apparently, it requires surgery, but apparently the report is also saying that he is okay. So it might not be major uh, surgery or something like that. So it might not be. Maybe it's not like a ligament tear or something like that. Maybe it's something where um, the surgery. Uh, where Aleister Black can recover from the surgery and be ready by NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. But um, be prepared if they do say that he actually will not be cleared to compete due to the surgery and that we end up getting a Gargano Ciampa singles match, which technically might work out for the best anyway. Um, but yeah, 
Alistair Black's hurt, had to get surgery. Apparently he's okay. Um, there's been no announcement as to, um, uh, there's been no announcement stating that he won't be an NXT Brook, uh, TakeOver Brooklyn 4. So as of now, we have to assume that he will be there, but be prepared for an announcement um, stating that he might not be. Um, so that was NXT, 205 Live. Um, lots of stuff happened. Cedric Alexander faced off against, um, oh God, why am I forgetting who? Well, against the Brian Kendrick beat Brian Kendrick, but then Gulak came out and they, they beat him up afterwards. Um, we had the contract signing between Gulak and Cedric, which was pretty cool. Um, Cedric kind of cut Gulak off before he could say anything, signed it. Then Gulak, um, was just saying, Oh, I'm just saying how impressive it is. How impressive it is that you're undefeated. And it's going to be amazing when I'm the one who actually beats you, um, signs it all that fun stuff. Um, well, actually what it was, was, what it was, was, um, Alexander beat, uh, the Brian Kendrick. He was jaw jacking with Gulak, who was at commentary and Jack Gallagher showed up and headbutted Alexander. And the three of them basically stood over, um, Cedric and beat up on him a little bit. Um, and then another stuff, um, I'm trying to remember what else was going on. Really, really having a hard time thinking about it. I know Tozawa had a match. I know Kalisto had a match. Um, but it's, I mean, none of it's going to be on SummerSlam. So I i apologize. I did watch 205 Live, but it was, but like, my memory is bad right now. So apologize. I, I did this. I did, was able to remember everything involving the Cruiserweight Championship. I know there's stuff going on with Lucha House Party and, um, some other people, I believe, with uh, I believe it was uh, Buddy Murphy, and um, God, not not Gulak, but I I get Gulak and one of the other guys on Two Hundred Five Live confused. Um, let me take a look at the roster. Um, and then uh, yeah, Akira Tozawa had had um had a match. Um, I believe there was talks about him and uh, Hideo Tommy as a tag team and all that stuff. Um, let's see. Um, I want to see the roster for 205 Live because that will uh, help refresh my memory as to who it is. Because I always for uh confuse Drew Gulak with one of the guys, Tony Nice. It was Tony Nice. For some reason, I always confuse Nice with Gulak and football and footballer said it. Um. I, I think it's because at one point, I think maybe during the Cruiser Week Classic, they looked uh, very similar, and they have uh, very similar ways they work. Um, so, yeah, all that stuff. Um, who was it that um, Tozawa worked? I can't remember. Um, but, yeah, that was 205 Live. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not as not as up on 205 Live as Demer uh, is. He's normally the 205 Live expert on the show. Um, so when he comes back, we'll, we'll do 205 live better. And I'm trying to do 205 live better. I actually talked about it this week, whereas last week I didn't really get a chance to talk about it. Um, on to wrestling news. The, uh, big wrestling news is actually not really news revolving wrestling, but news involving a wrestler. Um, Kane, AKA, uh, Glenn Jacobs won his, uh, mayor mayoral race for Knox County in Tennessee. So, uh, Congratulations to Kane. Uh, he is a member of the Republican Party, which um, I don't want to get too much into politics too much. I, I don't exactly um, agree with with certain uh, Republican policies. I don't know where exactly on the on the Republican spectrum, because the Republican spectrum right now is very wide as it is. I don't know where exactly he falls on on his policies, but congratulations to him for for winning the race. Um, he beat uh, his uh, Democratic opponent by um, almost f- by over 15,000 votes um, in the county, uh, which is impressive considering he only beat his uh, top primary uh, opponent in the Republican Party in the P- Republican primaries by 23 votes. Um, but yeah, Kane has is now mayor of Knox County, so he won't be showing up for a while. That explains why um, his run with Daniel Ryan was so short. I guess they wanted to do one last team. Hell no. Get Kane in. <clears throat> get Kane in for um 
for one last little quick run. I thought that all the races were going to be in November. Shows how much I know about uh about Tennessee mayoral races for counties when I'm you know when I'm in New York. Um, and um, I I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Kane, Kane will be doing the whole government thing, uh, for a while. We won't, we probably won't see him on, uh, on screen for a while, but good to see that he was, he wanted to get into politics. He did it and he won and he, and he, and he was able to stay in WWE and still do appearances in WWE while doing it, which is amazing and impressive. Um, by the way, um, he's now the second, uh, WWE wrestler in history to be elected into a public office. He joins, uh, Jesse the Body Ventura, for those of you who remember. Uh, he was the mayor of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota from 91 to 95. And then, uh, he won the Minnesota gubernatorial election. He was the mayor of Minnesota, as we all know. Wow, that was a loud vibration from my phone right there. I don't need, that might have even been picked up by, uh. By what you call it, by the uh, the microphone, um, and uh, yeah, Ventura had a four year run there. Um, four year run there from ninety eight to two thousand two, um, and then decided not to run again. So, Kane joins Elite Company when it comes to WWE uh, superstars getting into public office. So, congrats again to him. Um, another um, piece of news uh, going around. Uh, revolving around Hulk Hogan, who was recently reinstated into the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, if you guys want to know how I feel about it, I think um, Kofi Kingston, The New Day, summed it up perfectly. Um, how, like, people should approach the situation. So, um, I'll just leave it at that. Um, anyway, uh, there's belief that there might be an NWO reunion going on, whether it's something that just um, Hogan, Nash, and Hall... Are working on themselves or if it's like a network thing for wwe or if they're actually going to come back for like some sort of in ring or on camera type thing on the main roster we don't know but hogan has been posting to social media some images he's grown out his beard um and, and then he dyed it uh black almost a la hollywood hogan and uh some of the videos he's been putting out on social media have had like little like cut-ins with like black and white and NWO music and stuff like that. And then also um, there was this store, I believe it was in Florida near where uh, Hogan lives, where Hogan, Nash, and Hall were seen um, with cam with a camera crew apparently um, decked out in NWO gear and Hogan had his beard all uh, done up uh, Hollywood style. So people aren't sure um, what this could mean. Whether this means promotional stuff for WWE, whether it means maybe they're shooting some sort of vignettes, uh, maybe for um, an NWO return on WWE. I don't think I would mind it too much. I enjoy the the NWO. Um, the Hogan thing, you know, it's it's a dicey thing. But maybe if he's with the NWO and he's with uh, Hall and Nash, I always enjoy seeing Hall and Nash on uh, on WWE so long as they're not, you know, burying um, and taking over storylines from guys who are white hot and haven't been as white hot as Stone Cold Steve Austin in the Attitude Era. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, let's see. According to the report that I see on here, um, yeah, even though he was reinstated in the uh, Hall of Fame, W stated that he had not signed a new deal with the company. So who knows what's going on with this? I'm sure we'll find out in the coming weeks. Uh, yeah. So, another story is there is a very strong belief that Rey Mysterio is going to be back in September. Um, there are, uh, it's believed that uh, Mysterio wanted to work a limited schedule. Um, some, not, not as limited as like maybe say, um, kind of sort of like Lesnar, but maybe a little more frequent where... He would actually be able to spend time with his family since, you know, and, you know, be able to let his body recover. Because Ray Ray, even though he's in great shape right now, um, he's no spring chicken. You know, he's been doing this since the since he was like 18 in the mid to late 90s. So, you know, he's been doing this for a good 20 to 25 years. So he he's he's beat up. He's old. He wants his rest time and he deserves it. He's like he's he's an instant immediate like Hall of Famer. Um. So, but it looks like the WWE is willing to give him that um, because he doesn't have any commitments 
following all in. He doesn't have any bookings. Um, he's doing all in and he's doing a show the day after. And then his schedule is clear. So we may see, um, Rey Mysterio come back after all in to WWE and work a limited schedule, which would be very interesting. Um, apparently it's believed that WWE tried to push to get him signed be- uh, to start his deal before all in. So that way he wouldn't appear in the show. But, uh, apparently, uh, Mysterio just didn't want to say no, didn't want to back out of all in, which I understand cause it's going to be amazing. So, um, in a month, once all in is all said and done, we may very well see Rey Mysterio back. Uh, we already touched on the Alistair Black news, so that's all we have for the wrestling. So now I'm going to get into, we're going to transition from the wrestling world over to the Vigi game world. And before we get started, just need to take a swig of water. Mm. That's good. And it's because... Overwatch news. We're kicking things off with Overwatch news. The Overwatch League's first championship was crowned. It was determined last week. And as you guys know, in the podcast last week, I was discussing it, talking about how the uh, London Spitfire were up 1-0 on the Philadelphia Fusion. And I, I discussed about how, like, you know, the Fusion's good, but, you know, it was... I don't want to say it was a fluke, but I would kind of want to say, like, they kind of got lucky against New York Excelsior. It was more New York Excelsior kind of choked than Philadelphia Fusion won. And they were basically walking to the buzzsaw that was the London Spitfire. The Excelsior and the Spitfire have been, uh, without a doubt, the top two teams all season long. And London showed it by just dismantling the Fusion on Saturday. They 3-0'd them, won the championship. They are the first league champion, so congratulations to them. They win the million-dollar prize pool. And... The first season of the Overwatch League has come to an end. I believe there's, like, some extra exhibition stuff that they do in August um, after the championships, but the main but the main season is now over. And I believe it will start back up, if I remember correctly. It started up in January last year, so maybe January, February is when we'll see it again. Um, but in other Overwatch news, uh, the Overwatch League announced that after a successful first season, they will be expanding and laser scope who is uh, one of our mods, one of our good followers, one of our good listeners. Um, He's going to want to pay attention to this news because the Overwatch League is adding two new teams. They are expanding next year. One of those teams is going to be in Atlanta, Georgia, um, and the other one is going to be in China. China is going to get its second team, Guangzhou, China. Um, Interesting that uh, South Korea didn't get a second uh, second team since uh, it's so big in Korea, but then again, I don't know what other city other than Seoul they would uh, make a team for. Also interesting, they didn't make one. They didn't uh, expand for a team for like uh, Germany or Nor or maybe Norway or Sweden or um, even France um, or another England team. But yeah, we're going back to China for another team, and then Atlanta, Georgia is getting a team. Uh, no information on what the teams will be called, what their logos will be, what their team colors um, will be. Um, or what the rosters will be. That's going to be coming at a later date, but there will be an expansion with two new teams in Atlanta and Guangzhou. Um, other And the last bit of Overwatch news from the week, um, Overwatch um, ner- have Nerf weapons coming out. For those of you who don't know, that it was announced at uh, San Diego Comic-Con that there is going to be a line of Nerf weapons based off of um, Overwatch, which, could be, which will be a nice, cheap, easy option for cosplayers if they don't want to uh, worry about making their own guns. Um, they started it off with the reveal of Reaper's, uh, white, uh, skinned, uh, Hellfire shotgun at San Diego Comic-Con, and this week they announced the second weapon in the line, which will be, uh, D.Va's light gun blaster. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to take a look at it, check it out. They actually look really cool. They look very similar to what they look like in Overwatch, and they've just got the orange caps on the front, which, you know, you need, so that way it's not interpreted that it might be a real gun, even though these... Don't really look like real guns, but, you know, why not? Why risk it? Um, so, yeah, check it out. There will be more gun, more uh, weapons in the uh, nerf line for Overwatch to come. Uh, so just keep an eye out for more of those. Uh, then I'm going to get into some Destiny news. Um, just so everybody knows, um, some news on how the transition is going to go for Destiny 2 from uh, Year 1 into Forsaken. Because that's coming up. That's actually a month away. I really need to get back into Destiny and try to complete some things. Um, maybe I'll stream it this this upcoming week. Um, anyway, um, the Collections tab is going to be one of Forsaken's biggest features. It's going to be expanded upon. 
um, for how you store all your weapons and everything in year two. Um, in year one, it was just basically for exotic armor and weapons. Um, Bungie has announced that in order to transition over to the new system, they are basically suspending collections for the week leading into uh, Forsaken. So if there are any activities that you want to, and this isn't for the vault, uh, this is for collections. So that's a separate thing um, right now. So if you feel like there are any, if you play Destiny and you feel like there are any exotic weapons or armors that you're going to need to use for anything for the final week before Forsaken, make sure, and you don't have it in your vault or on your person that's sitting in your collection, make sure you take a copy, purchase, like get a copy out of your collection, put it in your vault or put it on your character um, just for that week. <coughs> um, they also, Destiny 2 also announced um, the Legendary Collection which is um, transitioning from actual, from in-game collections to physical collections. Yes, there was Destiny 2 news. Um, always Destiny 2 news. Um, I like I like the Destiny. Anyway, uh, Bungie announced, um, along with a new trailer for Forsaken, which I haven't been able to check out, but it's got, uh, the thumbnail's got Uldren on it. It looks kind of cool. He, look, he looks kind of badass. Um, we must kill him. We must avenge Cade. Um <laughs> Uh, for those of you who do not know, in order to play Forsaken, you have to own year one content and the expansions. Um, so you can't just buy Forsaken and play. Um, but in order to uh, rectify that, like they did with the Taken King, it's easy to to uh, to make up for that. Because if you pay $60, like as you would for a regular game, you will get the Destiny 2 Legendary Collection, which includes Destiny 2, Destiny 2 Forsaken, and um, the uh, expansions, Curse of Osiris and Warmind. So you'll get all that for 60 bucks. Um, the, I believe Forsaken is like 30 or 40 bucks for people who have bought the uh, early editions, uh, who actually bought uh, Destiny 2. However, the Legendary Collection will not come with the Season Pass for Destiny 2, which has the expansions, which is uh, $34.99. Gotta buy that separately. But, you know, if you haven't played Destiny 2 and you just want to, like, see what it's about, you you get a lot of content. You get all the year one content and Forsaken, so, you know, it's kind of worth it. And then you can decide later if you think that the Season Pass is worth it. Or if you definitely know that you want the, uh, the Season Pass included, you can get the Legendary Collection, which includes, or the Destiny 2 uh, Complete Collection, which includes uh, Forsaken, all the year one content, and the uh, year two season pass for $99.99 for $100. Um, I don't know what it's how much it costs for Forsaken and the season pass. If you're just getting Forsaken and the season pass, that might also be 60 bucks. So I, I'll just check that out yourselves, guys. Um, Destiny 2 actually releases a one month from today, the day that this is being shot today is August 4th. It comes out September 4th on uh, PS4, PC, and Xbox One. And then, last little bit of uh, Destiny 2 news um, as we're finding out more and more information about the transition from year one into year two. Um, the Regarding uh, year one weapons, because in year two, all weapons that drop will have random rolls in order to uh, incentivize uh, grinding, give people a, a carrot, players a carrot on a stick to chase. They have announced that uh, they will be retiring um certain armors armor and weapons from year one so um if you have not collected them by the time year two rolls around you will not be able to get them if you've collected them before they've been retired so you can still use yours it just means that you can't get any more copies and people who haven't gotten them can't get them bungie is not uh um uh, bungie clarified um and as for which weapons and armor will be uh, retired and not no longer available, it'll be the year one weapons and armors from the Vanguard, Crucible, Gunsmith, Meditation, Trials of the Nine, and Iron Banner uh, vendors. So all those will not uh, make it over into year two. And also emblems given out by the Gunsmith, Meditation, and Cade Six Stashes will also be made unavailable in year two. Um, Cosmetics and seasonal seasonal rewards for Vanguard, Crucible, Trials, and under uh, Iron Banner vendors are also entering retirement, which sucks because that means the selfie emote um, might not be available. I mean, it did say cosmetics. I don't know if emotes are cosmetics, and but they were seasonal rewards, so 
Who will see? Yes, bowling dude. Super grapple bro. Demurf is uh, on vacation, so he's out this week. Next week, he'll be back in hopefully two weeks. Um. So yeah, that's uh pretty much it. Um. While all other gear mentioned above will be retired, everything will be replaced with brand new weapon and armor sets and Forsaken. So, <clears throat> there's all that. Um, and then what's... I'm trying to revisit this one. And then we got some Madden 9, NFL 19 uh, stuff in the news. Um, for those who are unaware, uh, Madden NFL 19 comes out in six days. Comes out on uh, comes out on August 10th. Um, reviews are out. They've been good from what I've seen. However, there's been a bit of controversy involved as people discovered that not just this year, but last year, there were songs. There was a song called Big Bank featuring Two Chains, Big Sean and Nicki Minaj, in which one lyric uh, mentions uh, Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback, where it says, You boys, the lyric actually says from Big Sean, You boys all cap, I'm more Colin Kaepernick. Um, and apparently, it got censored. Not just this year, but last year. Um, and people just realized that now when somebody was looking around. Um, Colin Kaepernick was in the game last year as a free agent, but he is not in it this year. Um, people thought that it might be the NFL pressuring EA to censor the game, to censor Kaepernick as, as um, amid all the controversy that's going on with him. Uh, but it actually turns out that uh, EA just misunderstood the rights they had for Kaepernick's name. They understood that they had the rights, apparently, to use his name maybe in the game through the NFLPA. Or maybe because he's retired, they didn't know if they could do it. Um, or that um, they didn't know if they'd be able to have the rights to have his name mentioned in the song. So here is a statement by EA. I said, we made an unfortunate mistake with our Madden NFL soundtrack. Members of our team misunderstood the fact that while we don't have rights, while we don't have rights to include Colin Kaepernick in the game, this doesn't affect soundtracks. We messed up and the edit should never have happened. We will make it right with an update to Madden NFL 19 on August 6th. That will include the refer reference again. We mean no, we meant no disrespect and we apologize to Colin, to um, YG and Big Sean to the NFL, to all their fans and players for the mistake. So it was basically just like a mistake. All this controversy. EA just said, sorry, we messed up. It's our bad. No, there was no agenda behind it. Don't worry about it. Um, then um, let's get into some Fortnite news. Uh, Fortnite released a new update and the guided missile is back in the game. Uh, it's been tweaked a little bit. They have epic and legendary variants. Uh, Slurp Juice should be back. Um, apparently it was uh, changed, but then it was supposed to be in the update, but then it wasn't. Fortnite's working on getting it in. Um, uh, back into the game. Uh, there's a new uh, mode out right now where it's uh, jetpacks and explosive weapons. Um, if you want to mess around with that, it's also in the playground. So that's all the Fortnite news for this week. Nothing too big. Well, actually, that's not all the Fortnite news this week. Um, there is also news came out, um, that there are, I'm trying to find the original article. It was a USA Today article. Looks, um, parents now are play are paying for, uh, tutors for Fortnite for their kids. So apparently what it is, is just, um, you know, Fortnite as big as it is right now. Um, everybody's playing it. And so it's almost the same. What we're seeing is almost in schools with kids is a similar situation kind of to where like if you were the cra the kid who like really sucked at dodgeball or sucked at all the gym sports or sucked at like the sports in the playground and you get picked last or you get made fun of. Um, it's kind of the same thing, but with Fortnite now. So much like back in the day and even now where parents would pay um, to have like coaches coach the kids that get better at the sports they're not made fun of or if they want to like be really good and maybe become pro or like maybe just be be better at the sport they would pay for coaches for those sports now they're doing it for Fortnite too they're hiring Fortnite players to end up um to end up like teaching these kids uh better techniques at how to play the game 
So um, a lot of people think it's weird and interesting and, and obscure, but that's only just because it's video games, to be honest with you. With the way that like culture, our culture has changed and um, the fact that video games are very much important and a part of kids' lives now, um, especially competitive ones and the kind of like pressure and bullying you can suffer for not being good at a game, much like how you if you weren't good at a sport. Um, I can understand completely why kids would do it. Um, there were apparently a couple people in this article, a couple like a parent or two, who was like, I can't wait until this my kid goes pro in Fortnite and makes me all this money and I can retire early. I think it was kind of meant as a joke, but it's like, uh, you know, it's not easy being a, uh, you know, pro gaming, a pro gamer or a streamer who makes a lot of money streaming Fortnite. Um, not everybody's going to be a ninja, but you know, just from the standpoint, uh, the, the, the argument can also be made, you know, not everybody who's going to get uh, get coach is going to be the next LeBron James. It's going to get a, a private coach is going to be the next Lebr LeBron James or Connor McDavid. Um, I'll entertain being stupid for the next Alex Ovechkin. Um, so, you know, I think it's fine. It's just, it's just what we've been doing with sports as a society for decades. And now it's just transitioning over to video games. I just think it's a kind of a cool piece of interesting news. Um, then Pokemon go stuff. Um, Spinda is coming to Pokemon Go. Apparently, he has a ton. Uh, Spinda's apparently no one Spinda is the same. Their patterns are always different. There are a bunch of different variants. However, there are only eight variants that are being seen right now, and that is eight days before the next update. So a lot of people believe in Pokemon Go that it means that they are counting down to something. What we don't know. Um, but some people are rumor are under the belief that the next wave of Pokemon, the next gen of Pokemon, I believe it's Gen 4, will be showing up in the game for that, um, I believe it's the August 9th update. Yeah, which is this upcoming Thursday. So, that's all Pokemon Go news. Um, and then a couple of uh, like non-mainstream game news that I thought was interesting. Um, a bunch of people are ticked off. Um, people who like owning physical copies of games because they picked up the Spiral Reignited tri Trilogy um, at retailers expecting to get all three games on physical copy and they only got the first game. The other two had to be downloaded digitally um, and they were upset and um, Activision and uh, PlayStation Life uh, I, what was it? Uh, yeah, Activ uh, Activision got reached out to by PlayStation Lifestyle and Polygon, and they just res responded basically saying, well, downloading games so that way they can be updated is quite common. And, you know, it, the fine print said that uh, these are both downloadable. So, na 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 ha ha boo-hoo. Um, so, you know, not a very um, calming response from Activision. More like, you know... We don't care if people don't like the fact that this is the way it is. They should have read the fine print before they bought the game. Um, which, A, kind of got a point. B, that's also not the main point. They're upset that, the, that all three games weren't physical copies. Not the fact that they bought the game and didn't read the free fine print and found out that way. Like, you should have made the, them physical copies in the first place. Um... If you're going to do, like, a trilogy, either put them on one disc or have all three of them on a physical disc. Like, people like having their physical discs, man. I okay, understand that there is a growing demand for digital downloads nowadays. But then maybe don't ship as many units. Don't make as many units, but, like, put all the games on the physical disc or have three physical discs. But that's that story. I thought that was interesting. And then one last bit of uh, interesting stuff. A uh, fan-made mod for Morrowind, which has been... Um, we're uh, going on for about like, what is it? Like 15, 16, 17 years now. Ooh. Um, uh, just expanded the game world of Morrowind. Um, for those of you who are curious, uh, Morrowind was set on the, um, on a volcanic kind of uh, desertish, almost island um, called, where's the name of it again? Cause I can't remember the name. Uh, it's also hard to pronounce Vardenfell, um, with two V's at the start. Um, it was originally just the island, and there was like another uh, mainland just off the island that apparently um, it said that Bethesda wanted to make in the original game, but they just didn't have the time. Uh, but these fans have been taking assets, these fan modders have been taking assets and actually building it, and a large chunk of it has just been opened back up. And I think that a lot of the mainland or at least the crescent around it has been opened up for people to explore, including a, a large imperial city, which shows the imperial presence um, 
on on Morrowind, and there are now like faction. There's all these kinds. It's not just physically there just for you to explore. There are NPCs there. There are quest lines. There are faction quest lines and all that kind of stuff. So if you're ever curious, if you really liked Morrowind and you want to go back, I never played Morrowind. I watched my friends play Morrowind a little bit. My big Elder Scrolls game was um, Oblivion, and then I played um, about probably 20 hours of Skyrim. Um, might might entice me to maybe buy Morrowind and give it a try now that it's this far expanded. It's not canon, but it'd be cool to try out. And if anybody was a big fan of Morrowind back in the day, go check it out. Go, a good reason to head on, head on back through. And uh, with that, that's going to be the last piece of news uh, this week for this episode of Super Grapple Bros. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I will be solo again next week for the final time as Demorph is out. And then two weeks from now, um, I'm ready to do our SummerSlam predictions. Demorph should be around. Um, when Demorph gets back from vacation, we I'll try to talk to him about uh, potentially maybe doing a reaction stream to SummerSlam. We'll see. I'm not promising anything just yet, but we'll have a conversation. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Just a reminder, you can watch this uh this podcast live normally Saturdays around midday, early afternoon, um, on Twitch, almost lost my train of on Twitch at twitch.tv slash L underscore Murpho. You can also watch it back on demand on Twitch on that channel. You can also watch it in VOD on YouTube at youtube.com slash L Murpho real. Um, be sure to like, share, subscribe over there. And then you can also listen to us in audio form on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google play, other places where podcasts can be found. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. If you rate and review um, uh, and we get enough over there on iTunes, we'll be officially rated. More people will be able to find us when they do generic searches. So please check us out at Super Grab Bros on all those other places. You can also, if you want to give back, chat to us. If you can't get in the, the chat on Twitch, if you don't want to comment on YouTube, you can reach out to us in multiple ways. Uh, you can check out my Discord server, um, the El Murfo Discord server, which is in the description of every YouTube video. It's on the channel page on Twitch, and it's in the show notes of every episode of Super Grab Bros in the audio version. There are two channels on that server dedicated to Super Grab Bros. One is feedback, questions, comments, concerns, trivia, anything you want to put in there, go ahead and put it in there. And the other one is viewer predictions. We do viewer predictions for every single pay-per-view. If you win the viewer predictions in which you either get the most predictions right out of all the viewers or you beat myself or Demurf, you get shouted out on the review podcast. Um, you can also give us any feedback, questions, concerns, trivia, and stuff like that to us via email, supergrabbros at gmail.com. You can also check us out on, twi- on um, Twitter. Yes, we like to um, announce when we go live on Twitter. I am at L underscore Murpho. Demurf is at Demurf underscore 42. So be sure to follow us there. Sometimes we have other random musings as well. Um, and that is it for all that stuff. Before I go out. We're going to do the kayfabe news article of the episode. I had a hard time picking two of them. So uh, picking one from two of them. So you guys are going to get, because I'm by myself, I'm going to give you guys something extra um, to help perk up the episode. We're going to give you two kayfabe news article headlines uh, for this episode. So here we go. First one involving Lesnar and Heyman. When Lesnar kind of like physically abused uh, Heyman at the end of Raw, this one goes. Rare albino gorilla euthanized after attacking its handler. That's the first one. And then the second one, which is the one that we will uh, end the show with. It it involves Kane's uh, election. Glenn Jacobs' election. And it says, Necrophilic pyromancer, former dentist, turned corporate executive, becomes mayor. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm out of here. Catch you guys next week. Peace, deuces, deucey deuce. Love you all. Laters. Bye. Shut up and sit down.